Today we are going to learn what Brown can do for you. I feel that brown is a very overlooked color when it comes to painting miniatures. A lot of people strive for uh, very bright multicolored figures and you never see a brown space marine. Brown is a wonderful color and there's a lot of different varieties depending on how it's mixed up. When creating brown from scratch, you mix two or three colors together and depending on which colors you use and the ratio used, you can get green brown, yellow brown, red brown, more uh, neutral brown, dark or light brown, so huge amount of variety in brown. So today we are going to be painting up our brown wizard here and I'm just going to show you a couple different mixes that I often use when painting brown. To begin with, I am going to show you how I do kind of a neutral medium brown color. This is a little bit on the darker side, but this is one of my regular brown recipes. The three colors we are going to be using for this is Vallejo Model Color Camo Black Brown, Flat Earth, and then Game Color Leather Brown. We began with a very dark mixture of the camo black brown and flat earth and then added a little bit more flat earth for our first shade layer and now for our base coat we are using pure flat brown. As always we are using the layering method so we have our paint nice and thin about one to three here and slowly building up those colors layer upon layer. We continue to add more and more of the leather brown until we are up to just straight leather brown. And quite often I have another step here. Actually, I take bigger steps when mixing up the highlights and work up to a leather brown and then add plague brown on top of that. However, in this case, I'm trying to keep more of a medium brown color and we'll save the yellow brown for a different area of the miniature. For our next brown, we are going to move further into the green tones. We are going to be using four paints here, Military Green, Olive Brown, U.S. Olive Drab, and Khaki. We start off with a mix of our Military Green and Olive Brown. This is our first shade layer. This is a very flat area of the model as opposed to the uh, much deeper folds on the robe so we don't need as much shade hence we don't need that secondary shade layer. And then as we work up to our base coat and our first highlight mixing in some of that US olive green. Right now you may be thinking hang on he's painting green not brown but the point of this video one of the points that I want to make here is uh, while we use browns here and there some of the color, some of the brown colors we use are going to be stronger some are going to be softer however they all contain browns and virtually everything on this miniature in some quantity will be brown in this case we are using brown just for the shadow regions uh, there's a little bit of brown to dull our green mixed into the bottle however point being 
we are using brown on everything. Won't look brown necessarily, but brown is acting upon each color of this miniature. We finish off by adding a small amount of khaki to our mix. And if you're wondering why khaki, that doesn't seem very uh, appropriate. Well, if you look closely, khaki has a little bit of brown and it also has a little bit of green. So it's perfect for the mix that we have here. Next, we're gonna cover what is most likely the most popular tint of brown, and that's gonna be red-brown. We begin with charred brown for our shade and then flat brown for our base coat. For the highlights, we are going to go with a three color mix, mixing in cavalry brown and red leather to our flat brown. The reason being is that the cavalry brown is a little bit too red and the uh, red leather is a little bit too orange. So we simply combine those two colors to get kind of a soft, warm red brown color that's lighter than our flat brown and add that to our flat brown. For the final highlight, mixing in more of just the red leather because the cavalry brown is a little bit too dark uh, to continue to use as a highlight. It'll just get more red and not lighter in color. However, the slightly more orange tinted red leather is lighter. So we stop adding the cav and start adding the red leather instead. For the furry bits, we are going to go with a mix of camo black brown and khaki. Now this is not an ideal mixture. Khaki actually has a, a hint of green to it, so camo black brown is not the best shade. However, if we add just a small amount, it will get us our brown and warm up the khaki uh, just a little bit and get it to where I need it to go. Whenever you're painting fur or hair or something like that, remember uh, contrast is really the key. So you want the contrast to ramp up much faster uh, so you can show that depth of that fur. And consequently, you also need to have your paint a little bit on the thicker side so you have the control you need to carefully paint all those little hair tufts. When it comes to painting the small bits, you don't have to go through the whole five, six, seven layering method I showed you on uh, most of the rest of the model. For the straps and the pouch, we are gonna start off with a base coat slash undercoat of Beastie Brown, and then we are gonna hit it with a wash of charred brown mixed with black. 
charred brown is a good shade for beastie brown but because we are using it as a wash so it's become more transparent uh, we need to darken it quite a bit uh, so it actually shows results so that's why i have the black mixed in also the wash you see here was a little bit too light so i let it dry and then i applied it again i should have had the wash a bit thicker With the wash staining our previous layer of Beastie Brown, we can go ahead and reapply the Beastie Brown and use it as a highlight over the stained and darkened Beastie Brown. And then another highlight, just a little bit of Lejo Model Color Gold Brown added. Uh, this seems like an odd color mixture, but I want to move this brown away from the other browns that we use on the miniature. Beastie Brown does have a hint of red in it. It's a little bit more on the orange side, but by adding uh, more of a yellow color here, we're going to uh, tint it into the yellow range and keep it away from the uh, medium brown that we have in the robe and the red that we have in the cloak. After the Bigfoot sighting, all we have to do is paint the staff, and we are gonna start off with uh, a shade of beige mixed with just a tiny amount of leather brown, and then we'll do beige and then add uh, some white to that. A very simple three-step process because we have a very simple shaft of wood here. We don't have a big flowing cape, which Again, requires a lot of shading, a lot of highlighting. Uh, there's no deep cut recesses or anything like that. It's a stick. All we need is three coats, one shade, one base coat, one highlight, and we're done. And there we go, one brown-ish wizard. I wanted to give you some brown recipes and show that you can really get a beautiful miniature painting only using browns. Now, some of the colors I used have just a little bit of brown, some have a lot of brown, but everything on this miniature except for the staff crystal and the flame contain brown. Even the leafy mantle, even though I painted that in greens, I gave it a brown wash once I was done towards the base. So I hope you can appreciate browns. Uh, second point I want to make here, and the most important, notice when I was picking colors, I was telling you uh, this color has a little bit of red or this color has a little tint of green. One of the most important things you can learn when it comes to miniature painting is recognizing what colors go into making what color of paint. When you can look at a color and recognize, okay, this has a little bit of yellow in it, this has a little bit of green, this has a little bit of red, and so on and so forth, then you can learn what colors you need to highlight and shade those properly. If you're having difficulty deciding or figuring out what colors you need to shade and highlight a certain color, well, then you need to learn more about what goes into the paints that you're using. And once you start practicing of that, especially with browns, because browns are a mixture of paint, you will start learning more about what goes into each bottle of your paint. So go off and play with your browns, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Give me liberty or give me death, but with dinner I'll have stuffing.